The Olden World, written by Tsar Yoshi. Chapter 212 Unexpected Interlude Okay, I think that's enough. I'm going to stop you right there. Starlight blinked, eyes heavy with bags and mane limp and dangling. With a voice that sounded like the brakes on the Canterlot Express, she croaked, What? Why? That's why, Twilight Sparkle giggled, pointing a hoof. Also, it's 4 a.m., which is actually pretty early for me to turn in, but I'm never going to get to sleep without a few hours to process everything you just told me. But where... Starlight stopped and massaged her throat with a hoof. Barely halfway done with Iron Ridge. Even better. Twilight stretched, preparing to get up from her comfortable couch. If that's your idea of halfway, we'd be at this until noon and you still haven't said just how much is left after that crazy city. Besides, a part where you go to bed in the story seems like a great place to go to bed in the present to me. She raised an eyebrow. Especially given how long that second day was. Staring forlornly at the long, empty refreshment table, Starlight swallowed noisily. I guess I'm just into telling this so much right now. It feels like I should keep talking straight through to the end. I don't want to stop, even for the tiniest break. Starlight. Twilight stood up, pacing around the table towards the other sofa. I'm enjoying it too, and I'd be the biggest liar in Equestria if I said I didn't need to know more about that science you were talking about at the end. Her wings rustled in emphasis, and she grinned cheekily. Or is it the Plains of Harmony now? <laughs> but anyway, as your friend and mentor, you look like a dump, and I'm ordering you to get some sleep before you wreck your voice, pass out, and get ordered by Nurse Redheart to refrain from talking for the next week. Go to bed, Starlight. Starlight gulped again, shrugging and struggling to her hooves. You win, Van, but we're starting again first thing in the morning, right? After breakfast, Twilight corrected. Starlight grinned, nodding at the clock. Or lunch, at this rate. <laughs> Leaving the upper balcony of the library where they had been sitting, Twilight and Starlight trotted through a second-story corridor, crystals drowsily reflected around them in the castle's magical illumination. Starlight turned off first, her room slightly nearer than the princess's, and then Twilight did too, pushing open a bedchamber door and letting it swing shut behind her. Morning in Ponyville brought sunlight, but by the time Twilight and Starlight were up to see it, the sky was half covered in clouds, an industrious host of pegasi flitting back and forth and doing uh, pegasusy things to uh, bring about their desired weather. The castle's dining room, which thoughtfully was not a repurposed throne room but its own location on the second floor, had windows opening to the east, letting in the sun at an angle where it brightened the table but didn't hurt any eyes. It would have been perfect for reading a newspaper if Twilight had had any interest in that. Instead, her attention was fixed on Starlight. The mare's mane was fixed and her eyes were lighter, still weary, but with a much renewed spark dancing behind. Her voice was scratchy, but at least didn't sound painful to use. And her mouth was full of French toast, a giant platter nearby ready for refills. Finishing her bite, Starlight said, I think we're going to cap it at eight hours of talking for today. I'm still feeling a little sore from last night. Twilight blinked. Well, technically it was this morning. You know what I mean. Starlight rolled her eyes. Before we get started again, though, is there anything else you'd like to know? I think I said this last time, but even with the benefit of hindsight, I'm pretty much making this up as I go. I'm bound to forget something important, right? You mean, aside from the obvious? Twilight grinned back, twirling a fork in her magic. Starlight... That technology they were working on in Iron Ridge is crazy. And more than a little spooky. I don't know if I should have put this together before, but... Her voice trailed off, growing quiet. I've been assuming all the cutie mark stuff that you did was using your own mark. Like you had a mark for removing marks. But is that actually true? Or did you do it with... With technology? Starlight set her play down. Using the thing Shine Spark and Aaron by were researching... Well, her eyes wandered. The first thing you need to know is that what they discovered was hardly the whole story. Shinespark wasn't lying about their research only scratching the surface of a new field, and I know a lot more now about how everything works than I learned that night in the warehouse. 
There's also so much that even I don't know. Shinespark mentioned removing her own cutie mark, though. Twilight lifted a hoof halfway above the table. Up until now, I thought that was completely incomprehensible and had to be a product of magic I didn't understand, but but it's possible entirely through technology, Starlight finished. And other ways. And flying, too. She tilted her head. You're going to ask how that ties into everything, too, aren't you? Twilight nodded. Pretty much. Well, Starlight sighed. There's so much to explain, even if I try to talk about how it worked now. I'd never be able to keep all the details straight, so let's leave that to the story, okay? If I talk about it the way I found it out, it'll make a lot more sense. Trust me. She winked. Though I can't say that everything that happened with Sosa and Moonglass and Cutie Marks and Harmony Extractors and Flight Machines and all that is at least related to why I can do things I can do now. And why your horn works too, Twilight added, sawing off a bite with a fork and nibbling on it. As opposed to burning out every time you try to use it, right? Oh, she blinked rapidly. I actually did have a question about that. Was it always that bad, or did you really injure it in the mountains? I never could tell. It's complicated. Stolid grinned, emptying a bottle of syrup onto her plate. I'll explain it more later, because we did end up studying it. The best answer for now is that there always was something wrong with it, but going over the mountains made it worse. Huh. Twilight folded her hooves, chewing. Both mares jumped, staring down a staircase in the direction of the castle's front door. I only know two ponies who knock like that, Twilight said, rolling her eyes. Then, leaning over and filling her lungs with air, she bellowed, Come in! Flash! In a streak of prismatic light, Rainbow Dash was next to the table, moving so fast she might as well have teleported. Hey, girls! She greeted, brushing aside her bangs, not in the least bit winded by her charge. Breakfast for lunch, huh? Starlight grinned awkwardly. Twilight waved, beaming. Hi, Rainbow. We've got extra, so you can have some if you want. Really? Rainbow Dash's eyes lit up, and she seized a serving platter with a wing, dipping its contents into her mouth. <laughs> Thanks. This stuff's good. She wiped her muzzle, setting the platter back down. Twilight's ears folded, and she rolled her eyes. I didn't mean that much. It's fine. Starlight pushed her plate away, patting her stomach. I've had plenty. No need to make more. Well, okay then. Twilight blinked at her. If you're sure. Eh <laughs> Whoops. Rainbow giggled, taking a step back. Yeah, maybe that was overdoing it. Sorry, Twilight. And Starlight. She perked up, showing off her prismatic mane. Anyhow, I just thought I'd come let you know that the Weber Corps ordered a huge snowstorm for this afternoon. So if you got any errands, get them down now. Or oh, wait, if you like being out in the snow. I know, I sure do. Me and Pinkie Pie, we're gonna go sledding once it stops coming down, if you want to come too. That's everything, though. See ya! She made for a window, carefully stopping to unlatch it before climbing out and cannoning away. Twilight shook her head as the Pegasus left, chilly air from the window drafting in around her. Isn't it a little late in winter for a fresh storm? Huh. Lighting her horn, she closed the exit in Rainbow's wake, shaking her head. It feels like I've lived here forever, but every once in a while I realize it's been less than two years and there are still things I have so little experience with, like how they do winter in Ponyville. She wiped her plate with the last of the toast, savoring it and eventually swallowing. I bet you know how that feels. Tell me about it. Starly stretched, getting up and walking in a circle. I've been living with you for just a few weeks, and at the rate things happen in my life, that's practically an eternity. Next thing I know, we'll get called off on some giant adventure the moment I'm done telling my story. Well, it can happen. The map table does things like that. Twilight shrugged. But honestly, I'm still adjusting to the idea that I have a student and sharing this place with someone other than Spike. I'd be fine if things just went slow for a while. She stood up too, taking the dishes in her aura and carrying them to the dish elevator to the kitchen below. Or at least until the story's done. Can we continue? I really need to know more about that Sosan technology. Right now? Starlight stretched again, pacing to the open archway that led to the rest of the castle. Sure, I guess. Unless you have to get anything done before that snow hits. Snowstorms can be messy. 
We could wait, I guess. Twilight shrugged unhappily, following Starlight to the door. Snow has such a nice atmosphere, though. I'd love to listen while it was falling. You can make a story so much better just by hearing it in the right place. Heh, <laughs> atmosphere. Starlight chuckled. Well, why not? Snow and I have a bit of a complicated relationship, but sure, let's go continue. Starlight sat by the library balcony window, staring out the window at the increasing mass of clouds gathering in the sky. The library was vertically built, with the second story nearly twice as wide as the ground floor. Part of the space below was taken up by the reading room, and the balcony was built over that area's roof. Behind her, Twilight's horn shimmered, carrying a fresh tray of drinks and refreshments into the room, so they wouldn't have to leave until the story called for it. It's so interesting, Starlight mused, watching Pegasi control the weather. It's part of their species' magic, just like flight and temperature resistance. Every Pegasus can do it, yet so many parts of the world simply don't. Areas where the weather is more powerful than a Pegasi are organized, or where there simply isn't anything to control. Anridge, for instance. Twilight walked closer, perked ears visible in the window's reflection. I've always lived in Pegasus-controlled areas. I've read books about places where the weather is wild, though. It always makes the world feel so much bigger, even when it's inconvenient or dangerous. You spent a day or two in my village, right? Starlet shrugged. The weather was wild there, partially because we didn't have enough Pegasi to control it, but also because there was nothing to control. I don't even know if Pegasi can control sandstorms, and the thunderstorms that occasionally came down from the mountains were far too powerful. Even the weather court here would have trouble with them. We just got our water from mountain snow and went underground if things looked frightening. It's funny, Twilight murmured, standing beside Starlight and looking out the window, how weather and magic interact. Truly wild weather follows very observable rules, but only in areas that are free from large amounts of latent magic. Put something very powerful out there, like the Everfree Forest or a group of Pegasi, and those rules break down and the weather becomes controlled. From what I've read, a lot of the kinds of weather that are described as wild in stories don't follow the real rules of weather and are actually controlled by something else, even if it's just the author's impressions of how wild weather works based on the local patterns of a magically affected area where they grew up. It's fascinating. Starlight raised an eyebrow. Dick Ironridge, for instance, Twilight tapped a hoof against the ground, looking downward as if she was sketching a diagram. You keep talking about storms moving down the mountains, as well as the wind barrier that separates the hot earth district and the cold sky district. Hot air meeting cold air does produce wind, but not usually in that specific or consistent of a pattern. And given how little sunlight per day a mountain valley with frequent cloud cover would receive, the earth district shouldn't be that hot anyway. It's obvious Iron Ridge's weather is magically influenced, even if not by ponies. Wow! Starlight's eyes widened and she turned to stare at Starlight. That's really observant, actually. Remember you said that. Really? Twilight's face lifted. I guess something important? Maybe. Starlight grinned, moving to take a sofa. Anyway, is there anything else we should cover before I start again? Twilight took her own couch, comfortably folding her hooves beneath her. Well... I am still trying to wrap my head around how Yakakistan works. I know I asked last time and you said the delegation that came to Ponyville was actually just the leadership of an outlying village and that Prince is just a title given to village chieftains, but there's obviously more to it than that. Like, first off, where are all the Yaks? There's all of one of them in the Yak Embassy, apparently, and this supposedly important pony you just introduced called Fire keeps saying things like every pony when all the regular Anridge citizens say everybody, and it's just weird. She blinked. Fire is a crystal pony, right? Starlight waited, then took a long breath. That is a lot of stuff to explain all at once, Twilight. But yes, fire is a crystal pony, and yes, she did speak in predominantly pony terminology. I can't really explain everything, but how much do you know about Yakyakistan? Or think you know, at least. It's where the Yaks live, Twilight shrugged, northwest of the Crystal Empire over the mountains. There is lots of snow. It's a lot more extreme than that, Starlight corrected. 
You know, all the old hearth swarming stories and the unification myth about how ponies used to live in Dream Valley before migrating to flee the Windigos and all that? Twilight nodded. Yakakistan is built on the top of the glacier that formed where Dream Valley once was, Starlight explained. Almost all of it is an arctic wasteland. Yaks are ridiculously hardy, and their species magic somehow allows them to synthesize necessary nutrients by eating snow so they can survive there, but travel is almost impossible and it's very isolated. You see a lot of small villages scattered around, especially on the fringes where there are mountains to provide shelter from the wind. Yaks who live there sometimes are only vaguely aware the rest of Yak Yakistan exists. Really? Twilight pursed her lips. Yep, Starlight nodded. Now, the capital of Yakakistan is called Infinite Glacier, which sounds cool, but it's also about as self-descriptive as you get. Seriously? Twilight groaned. It sounds cool. Starlight grinned unapologetically. You were saying, though, Twilight slapped the couch with her tail. Right. Swallowing, Starlight continued. Infinite Glacier is built directly on top of the ruins of Unicornia, the old unicorn capital, and it's near enough both to the pass to Equestria, where the glacier ends, and the end of the glacier to the northwest, that the Yaks were able to build these colossal stone bridges from there to real terrain, letting them come and go and bring in real materials, as well as letting ponies make it there. So, while most of Yakakistan is an inaccessible wasteland, the capital is a multicultural haven with lots of different species and impressive architecture. It's also a dead end travel-wise, and doesn't have much of an economy, or didn't before the airships came, but it's the center of the Yak's religion which a lot of northwestern ponies follow as well, and that keeps it thriving and able to support its size. She nodded, focusing on the heavy gray snow clouds as she narrated. That's about as much as I can say for now. The important parts are that Yakakistan is large, complex, and very different depending on what part of the country you're in. I'll talk about it a little more later in the story. I can't believe I didn't know this earlier, Twilight whispered in awe. I should have pressed Celestia to let me study foreign policy while I was her student. She has to know about all this, right? That there is such a huge world to the north, beyond Equestria? Starlight hummed, nodding. Oh, she definitely knows. She's thousands of years old, remember? Equestria only became isolated from the rest of the world a thousand years ago when Nightmare Moon was banished. That's what our dating system is based on, isn't it? Celestia would have been the one who made the decision to close everything off. Twilight picked at the couch, choosing not to reply. Well, Starlight shrugged, staring out at the weather pegasi and sensing a break in the conversation. It's past noon and we're just sitting around here. Should we get started? We probably should, Twilight agreed, settling into an attentive position. Ironridge, day free. Tell me. All right, then. Starlight grinned. I woke before Maple. Everything was dark since we were in a warehouse and wouldn't be able to see the sunrise. It was peaceful and exactly the kind of morning we thought we'd left behind in Riverfall. End of chapter 212